Hey guys, it's Chef from Pressure Luck, and I just rolled out of bed and my hair's a mess, but thanks to these new cabinets that I have behind me, which are iron ores, the color, by the way, from Sherwin-Williams. They're darker now, and I have a new white splash. I just love it. It, it blends more easily. It's more forgiving. So, uh, yeah, of course, that's how it looks on the smaller screen. But anyway, today we're taking a trip to the garden. Richard loves to garden, and he loves to plant tomatoes. That's his favorite thing in the world, as well as peppers. And I am going to take full advantage of that garden today, because since we have more cherry tomatoes and peppers and zucchini, that we could count with to give it away at this point I said what are we gonna do we're gonna make pasta primavera now if you've never had pasta primavera it's essentially vegetables just in a pasta it's super super light like a, the vegetarians dream um, and it's really just a great excuse to have vegetables and pasta at the same time primavera by the way means spring so the colors are gonna be beautiful in this dish as well and you're gonna see how simple this is it is so easy it's literally a stepping of roasting vegetables boiling some pasta and then marrying them together at the very end so simple so let's have spring spring up in this kitchen and make the most amazing pasta primavera so simply running a stove let's do it okay so the first thing I want to do is I want to preheat my oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit so the very first thing I like to focus on with a primavera are the vegetables because that's really the star of the dish of course there's the pasta but this is what makes it sing and makes it so beautiful now we are very fortunate here because we have a little bit of a garden and we have this gorgeous tomato situation here that Richard did um, cherry tomatoes but they just keep coming and we get more and more of them so they're actually what inspired me to do this one today uh, we also got the zucchini and the green pepper from the garden so we have those as well in addition to that I'm using a yellow squash a red onion a red pepper uh, two large or three medium-sized carrots and two cups of a broccoli florets just like that Okay, and now what I want to do with this garden on a tray here And then I'm gonna take all those vegetables and chop them up I've explained how to do that very clearly in the recipe itself Make sure you click the link in the video description and once you're at the link the recipes at the very very bottom If you don't want to see all the step-by-step -step photos, although they're very helpful and since I have everything in a large mixing bowl now, and make sure it is a large one, I'm going to add in a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil and just pour it over, as well as two teaspoons each of salt, and I'm using seasoned salt, but you can use regular salt, uh, Italian seasoning, and one teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm just going to add that in top, or on top. How do you add something in top? As well as two tablespoons of a crushed or minced garlic, or you can use sliced garlic as well use about between four to six cloves okay now with clean hands get in there and we're gonna mix everything around so everything's coated in the olive oil and a little seasonings wonderful now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this large baking tray we have here and I'm just gonna pour everything on it so it's in one layer I know this looks like a ton of vegetables and it is but this is an ultimate primavera here all right, just get everything as best as possible into one even layer. Okay, now that my oven is preheated to 450, on the middle rack, I'm gonna put this giant baking pan here with all the veggies, and I'm gonna let it bake for 20 minutes. Maybe even a little bit longer, we're gonna check on it. All ovens do vary, so I'll show you how it should look when it's done. I'll also provide in the written recipe how to do this in the air fryer, although you're gonna have a lot less room in that than to just do it on a flat baking sheet. Meanwhile, as the veggies are roasting, let's focus on boiling our pasta. What I wanna do is I wanna take an eight quart super stock pot, that's what I typically go for, and I just fill it up halfway to about four quarts. And now I wanna turn the stove on to high and bring that water to a rolling boil, meaning it's really gonna boil. And now that the water has come to a rolling boil, which looks just like that, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of salt. You can use kosher, you can use iodized. And for my pasta of choice here, I am using a mastaccioli rigatti. Yes, you pronounce that mastaccioli. The double C is a ch, usually, especially in Italian. Um, it's a tubular pasta, very similar to a penne rigatti. So you could, they're interchangeable. You can use either one where the ends are on a bias and we have ridges here. Regular mastaccioli and a penne lice do not, or lice, do not have um, any ridges. Speaking of which, rigatti means ridges. Add an entire box, which is a pound. And once we've added our pasta, to avoid any of that spillover where the water gets all over the stove and it becomes like a crusty mess, I always reduce my heat to just medium and it'll cook just the same. Cook to the package's instructions for al dente. Or if you want to make it a little bit more tender, you can go for an extra minute. Okay, and once the timer is all good for the al dente time, taste your pasta, make sure it's to your liking. That's perfect for me. And then shut my stove off. And now I want to reserve one cup of pasta water. You're going to see why we're going to use this in a few moments. And now I'll just drain this through a colander. 
And now it's time to take my veggies out of the oven. And okay, that's exactly how we want them to look. Just like this. You see that? Just like this. Perfect. Okay, and now I'm gonna take the pot that my pasta cooked in, put it on top of my counter on like a trivet or a cutting board. Return my cooked pasta to the pan, or the pot I should say. And now I wanna take my vegetables that are roasted and then add them to the pasta. It's gonna feel like a ton of vegetables, which it is, and get all the juices in there. And by that I mean any of the juices or liquids that the vegetables release when they were roasting in the oven, as well as that olive oil. And I wanna get in there and I wanna toss everything up, all the pasta with all the veggies. It feels like there's a ton of veggies on that tray, and there are, but once you mix it with an entire pound of pasta, it's the perfect amount. Okay, we're gonna finish this up now by adding a half a cup of that pasta water, as well as about a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And we're gonna get in there and we're gonna mix everything up. You don't have to add the Parmesan cheese, because that'll keep it vegan if you don't, but I feel like it really, really brings everything together at the end here. And now if you want it a little bit creamier, you just add more of that pasta water. I always just start with a half a cup. I reserve more than I need in case I feel like I want to add a little bit more in there. If you add more cheese, it's going to make it thicker. And if you want to thin it out, just do it with the pasta water. Okay, this is looking perfect. And now we are ready to serve. All right, into a bowl. So simple and basically direct from the garden. Squash, some pepper, some broccoli. We got it all wrapped right there. Some carrot, zucchini. Some red onion, we've got it all going on here. Of course, some of those delicious burst tomatoes now. And there we have it, some beautiful pasta primavera, right from the garden, all ready to eat. Let's do it up. Okay, and there it is, pasta primavera, looking so beautiful, spring is sprung. Let's try this out, here we go. This is one of those dishes where it's like, you feel like it should be sinful, but it's not, because you're getting loads of nutrition in this with all these veggies. Mmm. That are just cooked perfectly. The perfect bite to the vegetables, they're not mush. They still have texture. Mmm. Mmm. Tons of flavor. It is so satisfying knowing that a good portion of this was grown literally outside the house. Mmm. Mmm. A mix between the sweet with the carrots and the red pepper to the more savory with the zucchini and the garlic. Mm. And those tomatoes. The tomatoes lace the entire pasta with this sweetness to it as well that just courses through the entire thing. And especially when you add the pasta water at the end and everything kind of combines with the cheese too. Mm. Mm. Perfect. And I really think that a penne or a mastacchioli or really any tubular pasta is perfect for a primavera. Wow. It is, I just don't feel guilty eating this at all. It's like an excuse to eat vegetables because you can do it with pasta, you know what I mean? Delish. I almost feel bad Richard isn't here right now because if he was, he'd be eating this entire thing because, you know, just out of gardener's pride saying, that's right, I grew this, I, I did that. It's a terrible Richard accent, but you get my drift, right? Listen, this Jew from the North might not have the best Alabama accent going on here, but I'll tell you, when I'm down there, I eat like the best of them. I know about the white barbecue sauce, I know about all the stuff. Now, the way I came onto the cooking scene here on the interwebs was using my Instant Pot, as you might have known. Uh, that being said, I've written four cookbooks for it. Four, all bestsellers. Uh, there's literally something for everybody in these books, and the thing that's amazing about all the books, all of them, is their beautiful color step-by-step -step photos for every single one, as well as a final shot, so there's no guessing what any recipe will look like in my books. It couldn't be easier. It's like the most visual aid guided book ever with delicious, simple results. But I feel like I have to make another cookbook now and maybe it'll have to focus on pasta because this is seriously so much fun to do and so easy at the same time. Right on the stovetop, old school style. Check out all my recipes at PressureLawCooking.com where they're free. You, there's a recipe card at the end of every recipe. Just go to the bottom um, or Facebook.com slash PressureLawCooking. Make sure you like that page. I shouldn't say or, I should say and. You don't want to miss that because anytime I share things like recipes, sometimes great items go on sale and just some silly fun. Check that out. And at Pressure Look Cooking on all the other socials, YouTube, uh, the Instagram, all that stuff. Can't keep up anymore. I'm doing my best. Thank you so much again, my friends. And the next time you're outside in the garden and you're seeing such delicious, beautiful vegetables begin to sing, well, come and bring them inside the house and make some pasta primavera because you'll have a taste of spring.
Enjoy. Oh, look at all these goodies. Yes. Mmm.